Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. A lot of people, a lot of people, want to hear from you want and want to understand what the hell you mean by upthinking and how it's different from all those other versions of thinking. And we need to, you need to explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, so uh, what is up thinking? So up thinking is the same as thinking. It's just it's just being more aware of your thinking so that you're better at it. Because, um, you know, the, the research is pretty clear that when we gain an awareness of our own thinking processes, then we can get better at them just in the same way that as you gain awareness of your you know your breathing when you're doing yoga or whatever you get better at breathing and it, it facilitates yoga practice or if you're more aware like arnold schwarzenegger talks about you know being more aware when you're bodybuilding you know yeah then you, you get better at it so awareness it turns out that awareness is really critically important but this is a particular kind of awareness. This is an awareness of the processes that you're using all the time to organize information and make meaning out of it, which is what thinking is. Thinking is just the process that we use to organize information to create meaning. I would imagine a lot of people think thinking just happens in their head. You're saying thinking is building meaning, and there it sounds like you're saying there's two things we do. There's two parts that we have to thinking when you said organizing information. That yeah. is a little confusing. Yeah. So there's the information. Yeah. Whatever whatever it is, you know, like there's paper on the table and it's reflecting white differently than the table, which is black. And there's a pen, which is different than the paper. And right. I'm taking in information. Uh, and how I organize that information to make meaning out of it is what makes that information actionable. And that means I can take action. I can do something with that with that information, right? Uh -huh. So when we when we organize information, that is the process that we call thinking, right? And we're always thinking, as you said, everybody's thinking all the time, right? So a lot of people think, no pun intended, that you don't really have to learn to think because we're thinking all the time, but. You're breathing all the time too, but you might not be breathing very efficiently or very well, or you might be breathing very shallow, uh, you know, not right. breathing through your nose, uh, you know, things like that. Um, we're walking all the time, but you can improve how you walk. You know, we're we're right. um, we're so, sitting all the time, but you can improve how you posture. sit, right? Yes. You can improve your posture. Yes. Yes, yes. We're eating all the time, but you can improve how you eat by being right. more aware, right. right? So thinking is the same way. You can improve how you think by being aware of the processes that you use to think. The only difference I would say is that thinking is the thing that wow. drives all those other things that I just mentioned and all wow. the other things in the world. So. Thinking is kind of like the most important thing because thinking is driving all of our decisions, right. all of our actions, all of our emotions, yeah. all of our predictions about the world that we live in and about what's going to happen, whether, you know, whether when you step on a rake, whether it's going to come up and hit you in the face, you make predictions about that, right? Right. That uh, when you open a door, there won't be a bear on the other side of the door. Oh you know, we make predictions every time we open a door that <laughs> there's not a bear on the other side of the door, right? There might be someday. There could be. Depends on where you live. <laughs> but the probability is very low right. that there's going to be a bear on the other side of the door. Right. So we're making those kind of predictions right. all the time. All of that's happening because of thinking. Right. So, you know, thinking is really the thing that's driving all these other things. It's driving how well you're doing all these other things. Right. But you said one thing that's a little curious. Yeah. You said thinking drives emotions. Yeah. And I would imagine that that is a funny <laughs> sentence to hear <laughs> yeah, because go. emotions, you just have emotions. Like you can't do anything about your emotions. Yeah. You feel what you feel. But how does thinking connect to your feelings? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. So a, lo a lot of... A lot of the time, 
we have emotions and we're not aware of the thinking behind the emotions, right? We're not aware of the set of assumptions that we've had to, to that lead to the emotion. So, and a lot of times we're not aware of the thinking that's happening. We have unconscious thinking and right. subconscious thinking and, and then conscious thinking. And so there's a whole world of unconscious thinking that we can gain access to when we understand how we process information better uh -huh. that lead us to realize that, oh, you know, behind this emotion that I'm having, I feel insecure or I feel sad or I feel angry or I feel, you know, any of the number of emotions um, is actually a thought, a, a thinking model that I'm taking as gospel, that I'm taking as like a fact, right? So I might- That you believe I'm, to be true. That I believe to be true. So I might enter a room and be like, oh, you know, there's there's Bob or Sally or whatever. <laughs> we always and pick on Bob. I always pick on Bob. We don't actually know Bob. I don't have Bob's a friend just named Bob, Bob. I don't think. Um, but, you know, Bob doesn't like me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm having feelings about that. Well, I see. before the feeling was the thought, Bob doesn't like me. Bob doesn't like me is not a feeling. Bob doesn't like me is a thought. I see. And then I might feel insecure or I might feel sad or I might feel, you know, angry or maybe I'll feel, you know, frustrated or something like that. So you're saying the thought precedes the feeling yeah whether you like emotion. it or not there's some thought in there right that's interesting so Th think of it this way think of some something that somebody could do to you that would really upset you like you know you're somebody cheats on you or somebody you know punches steals you. something from you or something well punching you'd know because they, they're hitting oh, you but yeah. let's say you, you're not aware you you think that person cheated something. on me or that person stole something all of a sudden you feel certain things. Yes. And then later you find out, oh, they didn't. Then you you immediately stop feeling those things. Oh. Right? Yeah. Because the mental model, the thought model oh, changes. You All of a sudden you realize, oh, they didn't actually steal it. it I, I lost the money. I And I and now I found where I put it. I but see. I thought the person stole that from me. And then you feel, you know, all kinds of feelings, all kinds of emotion. What you just said is if you change the thought... Yeah. Then you can change the feeling. Yeah. You're saying that's if the thought changes, the feeling changes. Yeah. Well, you should say more about that because that's interesting. <laughs> so that means you have more control over your emotions. Tons more. Than yeah. We think. I think a lot of people, the feelings, the thoughts and feelings kind of all go together. They're, they're what we call conflated. Uh -huh. They're conflated together. Right. And so in your mind, they kind of, they're, they're almost like entangled and it's hard to pull them apart and realize what's actually the feeling and what's the thought and what is the thought made up of and what is the feeling made up of. So it's like uh, being more aware, what scientists call metacognition, yeah. is in many cases having more emotional intelligence is about understanding what's an emotion and what's a thought and pulling them apart and understanding the thought and if the thought that drives the emotion is true if that turns out to be a real world scenario then yeah you, you are going to feel certain things as a result of that being mm -hmm. true right mm -hmm. if you find out i mean not to be macabre or anything but but let's say you heard that someone you loved had died and then later you found out that they hadn't died oh, that's right weird. that's like that's a tv movie like, that's like a tv <laughs> movie right yeah. so if the thought was true, then you're going to feel right. a bunch of things. But if the thought is not true, if it turns out that they didn't die, right, you're gonna then feel you're going to feel all those thoughts, all those feelings that you would have had of, of grief and pain and all that kind of stuff. That's not going to occur anymore. Interesting. Okay, so that's interesting because you just you just sort of hinted at emotional intelligence. Sure. So what you're saying is thinking is part of the degree to which you're emotionally intelligent. Huge part. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So what about other kinds of thinking, like critical thinking or... Yeah, I mean, there's know? there's somewhere on the order of 30 different types of thinking that, that are thrown about. Yeah. Critical thinking, you know, creative thinking, scientific thinking, design thinking. Yeah. Those are some of the popular ones. Um, create, did I say creative? You did. Creative thinking. Yeah. 
critical thinking is a really big one. Um, and then there's lesser popular ones, right. uh, interdisciplinary thinking right. and uh, analytical yeah. thinking, synthetic yeah. thinking. You know, and some all of those are parts of, of the others. Yeah, inductive logic, deductive logic, all those kinds of different ways of thinking, right? right. Um, and all of those ways of thinking, you know, ha there's whole worlds that talk about those ways of thinking, but there's really only one thinking. And those are just variations on on the theme of thinking. Thinking is thinking. We all have the same basic brain structure. Um, we right. might think very different thoughts, but thinking is thinking. It's one. There's one thinking. So you're saying we think different things, but the way we think about them is the same. Sure. You mean for sure. all people? Yeah. If that's true, why do we have so many different named ways? Like, is it true that, like, critical thinking is different than creative thinking? But you're saying that the critical and creative are different, but the thinking is the same? Like, I guess I'm confused by that. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit like, it's a little bit like saying, you know, building a, if you're a carpenter, building a table is different than building a chair. Yeah, sure, it is. They're different. But, like, the carpentry skills are the same. Oh. Or if you're a farmer... Farming wheat is different than farming corn, but the basic farming equipment and skills and, you know, knowledge is the same. Right. There's going to be some things that differ if you're critically thinking versus creatively thinking, but they're not really coming from a different part of your brain. They're just operating on the same processes that your brain does and has been doing since you were born and actually before you were born that's a long time yeah <laughs> these, days. these days so why is there so much hype about critical thinking like everybody talks about critical thinking i mean even when you just say the word thinking people are, are usually think critical thinking it yeah. seems to me it's really popular yeah i think a lot of a lot of critical thinking comes out of like our our uh desire to get things right and to uh counter possible bullshit, you know, possible, uh, you know, things that are suspect. Mm -hmm. So we, we, you know, the, the, the idea is that we want to come with a critical eye, uh, so that we can right. suss out what is, you know, real and what is right. not. And, uh, you know, to me, critical thinking is just a form of bias. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. So I think, more about I'm that. not sure why you would want to purposefully enter a situation and be biased on purpose that doesn't make any sense to me well how is it biased people because you're ask you're purposefully being critical you're purposefully coming with a critical eye oh instead of instead of sort of just looking at the situation and and understanding reality you're coming at it from a critical eye so we train for example doctoral students all the time in critical yeah. thinking and yeah. we train them to be very very critical and they end up being very critical <laughs> And so, you know, if you take that critical mindset uh, and you apply it to innovation, yeah, you know, when, as soon as the little sproutling of a creative idea comes to the surface that could turn into a, a masterful innovation, yeah, if we're critical of that thing and we start pruning it right away, mm -hmm. then that thing's going to die, right? But if we let, you know, let it grow a little bit and be open to the possibilities of what it could become, um, you know, then then we can prune later. There's always going to be an opportunity to prune. Right. But to come preset. I see. With the mindset of being critical just seems like uh, I mean, we see this in doctoral defenses all the time. You yes. have all these, yeah. you know, you, the doctoral student stands up there and it's like the job of the audience to be like. Uh, critical, critical. Yeah. you know, and it just ends up being like, you kind of go, these people are kind of dicks. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> they're trying to prove that they're still smarter. Than yeah. Everybody's trying to prove how yeah. smart they are. It's and, not very you know, nice. it's not very nice. And it's also and not, very, it's not very open to the ideas and it's yeah. not terribly intelligent. Yeah. Well, so then. It's like a gotcha. It's like yeah. gotcha reporting. Exactly. Is the, this has the same yeah. kind of feel to it, right? Like these reporters that are going to be like, I'm going to get you, you know, and that's the flavor that critical thinking happens instead of letting the story 
unfold. Unfold, and and if it unfolds that the guy, you know, stoic the secretary, or if the guy, you know, uh, whatever it is that, you know, if if, if, if that's what happened, <laughs> then, then the feeling is warranted. Then then you're gonna then the story's gonna emerge, <laughs> and you're gonna you're gonna let the story emerge. It seems like what you're saying is. There's all these different types of thinking, some of which are very popular and sort of dominate the space people talk about. But what you're saying is- Popular, but not promising. Yes. Just because something's popular doesn't mean that it's uh, so, promising. Okay, so we started this conversation talking about the fact that you can increase your thinking, yeah. that you can upthink. Yeah. How, and you said that underneath all of these different types of thinking is thinking. Yeah. And just, I mean, when I say upthink, I don't mean to like coin some new term. I just mean like we, we can level up our thinking. We can, we can increase our ability to think because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about thinking out there. First and foremost is kind of that we're born the way we are, that we're born, uh, you know, smart. of a particular intelligence and a particular level of thinking. And then that kind of proceeds through the rest of your life. And that couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, we know that we know that to be false. So there's hope. There's tons oh, of hope. That's... In fact, um, you know, the, the old saying uh, that uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard is 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 absolutely applicable to the area of, and the science of thinking, because oh. If you're if you're willing to work hard and practice, you can get very very good at thinking in in very very powerful ways. And you know maybe you were born with a lesser IQ or something, but that's not going to matter at all oh, because yeah. you're gonna you're gonna be able to practice your way into right. uh, into being much better than the guy that maybe was born talented, but. Doesn't, doesn't work practice, hard. doesn't work hard. Yeah, yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, you were talking about misconceptions of thinking. So the first one you said was that we're born mm -hmm. with a thinking ability. Are there more misconceptions? Oh, there's tons of misconceptions. What are the I most mean, There's important? no shortage of misconceptions about thinking. Give me your top couple. Or well, I mean, I think that, that the one that you're born with is kind of um, deeply rooted with the idea that, that we don't really practice thinking. Right. Um, right. And and the truth is, I mean, it, it, what I think what we've learned in, yeah. in 30 years of research, probably the number one thing that we've learned is that you can practice right. and that and that nothing is going to happen without practice. That right. thinking is a skill and that like any other skill, um, if you don't practice, you won't get better. And if you do practice, you will get better at thinking. And so, you know, a lot of what we've, our, our research is focused on, I think, is, is what are the thing, what is thinking? How do we right. actually know what it is? Right. What are the underlying processes of thinking that Just apply to all yeah. these types of thinking? How do we measure it? Is it measurable? And I, I think yeah. we can measure it today. Yeah. So a lot of people don't realize that we can measure thinking. Yeah. Um, and, and how do we, practice it what should we actually do and not do to get better at it right and um and how do we measure that practice how do we how do we know whether the we're getting right. better i mean think about in whether it's weightlifting or karate or you know yoga or what, whatever example you want to use basket weaving yeah. you know there's all kinds of feedbacks about whether or not you're getting better at it Right. And we, we need to develop better feedback for our thinking, right? That right. Uh, how do we know that we're getting better? Can, uh, can I lift more weight? So by know? feedback, do you mean um, moments where we can measure our progress? Is that yeah, mo moments, th ways that we can see whether or not we're, uh, you know, that we've better. lost a pound or that we've gained yeah. five pounds in our curl or that we've we can go deeper in our split stretch or, uh, oh. you know, you're, you're a better writer, you yes. know, or that type right. of thing, things that we can measure. Yeah. So what you're saying is, A, our thinking ability is not capped. We're not like born into a limitation of our thinking. No. Then you said we can 
teach thinking, we can measure thinking, we can practice thinking, and that that practice can lead to measures of improvement that we can actually see if we've improved. Absolutely. Right. And so I guess I guess if if I were hearing this for the first time, I would wonder, well, what does that really mean? How do you actually practice your like how do you practice thinking? Right. Yeah. Like it seems like that's a a very strange claim to make. Yeah, it's 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 kind of it's It's weird. That's what I'm saying. I think people have so many misconceptions about thinking yeah um that they have a hard time even imagining what that would look like um and and you know wh- one of the other misconceptions i would i would point out is um thinking is wildly complex i mean think of all the yeah. things we think about think all of all the everything ways you know crazy yeah. how much how many different things we can think we have all these different things that we can think Right. Uh, and so people think naturally that because of that overwhelming complexity, thinking couldn't possibly be simple. No, they definitely don't. They think definitely this. do not think that. No. But it is. Okay. Thinking is simple. And it turns out that many of the very, very complex things on the planet, like, you know, the, the origin of species and, you know, the... the all the different speciation events that occur in evolutionary biology based on A, T, C, and G, the nucleotides that that form DNA. Um, all of those things are based on very, very simple things that like right. rules in a sense that that are just dynamically interacting with each other. So all of this com- rich complexity that we see when we think of thinking and all the human thought um, that goes on is actually based on very simple things. And it turns out it's based on four very, very simple things that we call D, S, R, and P, distinctions, systems, relationships, and perspectives. And um, some of our research has actually shown us that there are things that we tend to do when we think yeah. that we should keep doing. Yeah. Like most humans do X, Y, Z when they when they think, and that's good. We should keep doing those things. Yeah. And then there are things that we tend not to do when we think that we need to do more of because of the way that the world works, because the world is, you know, volatile and uncertain and complex and, you know, adapting all the time and things like that. And so the, out of that kind of research, what we get is what we call moves. 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 uh, Cognitive movements. And a move, the way you can think of a move is like a push-up. Imagine a push-up, right? A push up. Yeah, you have a starting position yeah. and you have an ending position, right? Yeah. So the move has like the starting position and the ending position. Yeah. And in between, you can very clearly see what you're doing and you that's different. It. And you can practice yes. it, right? Okay. You can practice push up. I think I'm getting that. And if you can't do a push up, you can, you can like, you know, get on your knees and do one. There's all, and you can practice that and then until you can do a, a, yep. a regular push up. And then from there, you can do one handed and offset and all kinds of things. Right. So, there, you know, and there's other things that you can do that are very similar to push-ups, like, you know, bench pressing is yeah. similar to a push-up in terms of the movement, even though you're literally upside down, but right. it's the same movement. Right. Um, and so, uh, you know, th- th- it can get kind of complex, just like weight training can get complex in terms of all the different things you're doing. But generally speaking, if you think about weight training, it has it has some basic moves. It has a, a, a push up type thing or bench press. Yeah. It's got a squat. Yeah. You know, it's got a curl. Yeah. It's got a deadlift. It's got a you know farmer's carry. You've got some basic okay. moves, you- and those moves will hit. If you did all five of those moves, you'd hit like you know seventy eighty percent of what you need to hit in your body. Now, of course, there's you know, you could literally work on finger strength and right, right. other moves that are much, much more sophisticated, uh, like rock climbers do or something yeah. like that. But those basic moves will hit, we call it a Pareto law, like a, an 80-20 rule that right. like basically you're going to hit with 20% of the moves, you're going to hit 80% of the right. benefit, let's say. Meaning if I do those five physical moves yeah. consistently, I'm getting like 80% of Absolutely. my body is going to get Absolutely. Completely buff. Yeah, you're going to get jacked. Yeah. Right? So you're saying then 
you were saying that there's cognitive so moves. So a cognitive is move is very similar. Yeah. It has a starting point yeah. and it has an ending point. And it might be something as simple as like, you start with a concept, any concept, doesn't matter what it, what it is. It could be salamander or dog or, yeah. or the engineering department at my work or yeah. my teenage daughter or, you yeah. know, uh, a pen. Like it could be any concept. So that anything. You start with a concept. Yeah. And one move, for example, is zoom in, zoom out. So, and it has to do with part whole structure, which is one of the patterns, the right. S in DSRP. So we zoom in and we break it down into parts. But also we see that thing as a part of a larger whole or holes. So right. we zoom out. Right. Well, that seems like a very simple thing to zoom in and zoom out. Well, the, the research shows that most people zoom in. Will, will tend to zoom in, but they won't zoom out. Meaning they'll break stuff into parts. They'll break stuff into parts, but they won't see okay. the thing that they broke into parts inside of a larger I hole, or in this, inside okay. of the larger context. Right. And the research sort of shows that bias, that bias is towards parts and away from holes, hmm. right? Even though, even though, ironically, when you're doing that move, the thing that you started with, let's say salamander, yeah, I like salamander. You know, and we break that down into tail and feet and, you know, scaly skin, scaly skin or whatever. And all that, yeah. This salamander thing now is a whole. So we're we're thinking a whole and then we're thinking parts. Right. But we don't think of the this whole as a part of a larger whole. So we're already thinking in part whole. So this is the stuff you're saying we tend to do. Yeah, we're already we're doing We're already that. tending to do yeah. So you're saying to, to get better, we to need get to better, do this other thing. Which we're already doing, right? We're already make you thinking yeah. in part and whole. Right. And we just need to think in part whole one level up or two right. levels up. Right. Right? So you're saying that there's a there's these moves. Yeah. And each move tells you it sort of builds off of something we know we do. Yeah. But it extends it to what we need to do to become better at yes, thinking. Yes, exactly. I see. And if we just practice those moves, and it's kind of a starting position, like a push-up, and then an ending position. So the move shows you what you're doing differently. So the move yeah. shows you you're pushing up. Right. In this case, the move shows you that you're adding parts, mm -hmm. and then you're adding holes. Right. So you start with an object of any kind, whatever it is, a conceptual object of some kind, an idea. Right. It could be a feeling. It could be anything. Oh, yeah. And you break that into parts. And then you also think of that thing as a part of a larger whole. Right. Right. right? So that's the move. And you practice that move. And believe it or not, you you start, you'll you think, oh, this is such a basic thing. Yeah. Yeah, it does sound but a little basic. It sounds a little basic, doesn't it? Well, there's there's five of these moves that we know from the research that if you do those five moves, there's a there's hundreds of moves, but yeah. These five are like those five in 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 working out. Um, these five are gonna, you know, just transform you as a thinker. These five moves. So what you're saying is thinking is complex, but underneath that is simple stuff. And you're saying there's simple stuff people can do over and over again to become better at thinking overall. Yeah, I would I would say the little tiny bit different, which is that. There are sim the 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 outcome of thinking is complex, but the input for thinking is simple. Okay, so let's you you nerd it out there a little bit. <laughs> That's so let's say nerdy, it in English. Yeah, so you're saying the 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 way I think is simple on these rules, but the things that come out of my thinking are can be complex. Can be wildly like complex. The outcomes. Yeah, of if you thinking. think about all the thoughts that have ever been had by human minds, they're wildly complex and constitute all of human knowledge and all of human uh, mistakes and everything yeah. else. But I think it's massive. If people were listening to this, they might call a little bit of bullshit and they'd ask you, well, uh -huh. what if I'm thinking about world peace versus how to feed my dogs? That seems different. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. not. But I'm not saying all thinking has to be complex. I'm saying well, if we take saying... thinking as a, as a huge, right. as all of thinking, right? You're talking about everybody's thinking is based on these four simple rules. That's that's a big right. So jump what, for people. What you're saying is whether I'm thinking about nuclear science, yes, or, or feeding, feeding your my dogs. dog, 
I'm I'm doing it the same way with these Bingo. five simple yeah. moves yep. would be equally applicable to something what I think is big and hairy versus something that's simple. Yep. In the same way that if you're sitting on the couch eating potato chips or running a hundred mile marathon race in the mountains, you're using the same basic structural heart. Yes. Right? It's not like that That's person has a different heart than you have. You, 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 your heart's still pumping blood the same way. That's interesting. With the same like ventricles that. and yeah, yeah. arteries and things like that. And so, you know, we're not, I'm not saying anything terribly, uh, you know, I guess profound, but. It is it, kind of profound. Yeah, it's unexpected. It's unexpected that something well, so complex yeah. could be so simple. It's sort of counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive. It's not that's what, a better word for it. Yeah, yeah, see, this is what happens. I said better. <laughs> um, okay, so that's interesting. So we started talking about upthinking. Mm -hmm. And you've talked and you've gone into these moves. So that's all upthinking is. Upthinking is, is doing those things. Upthinking is just getting good at thinking, like like actually practicing, you know, if I say breathing versus yogic breathing. Yeah. Upthinking is just, you know, a, a form, a more a more sophisticated form of, of your everyday thinking. Right. right. It's just getting better at thinking. It's practicing thinking. I mean, everybody can go out. Most people can go out and like shoot a basketball. But then some people can do it really well and some people can do it extraordinarily well. Right. right? And so, you know, it, it, what we're all we're saying is. It's no different. Thinking is no different than any other skill. If you want to get good at it, you can. You have to practice it. And you have to practice it. And. and and just like a great coach knows what to practice, you know, half the battle is knowing what to practice. Right. Right. And so you could practice a lot of things in basketball or in weightlifting or in or in computer design or in basket weaving, basket weaving, whatever. Mm -hmm. You could practice a lot of things that didn't propel you into mastery. Right. And you could spend a lot of time making lots of mistakes practicing the wrong things and then you meet somebody that really understands basket weaving yeah <laughs> not that i have but <clears throat> if you did they would be like no no no, focus on this you know i don't know what that would be but oh i'm sure like the, there's the some technique or something yeah some technique, some pressure right? you put some, on yeah, yeah. Exactly. we should get a basket weaver to come talk to us yes yeah. Or knitters, like knitters. There's some ha hardcore knitters out quilting. there. My mother was a quilter her whole life. She was hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Like she took quilting to a level that was so much more extreme than like just what we think of as stitching and quilting. So what are you going to say to the, all the people that are like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time to learn thinking. I've got a million things going on at work. My family life is demanding and blah, 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 like. What do you say to those people? Yeah, I, I think uh, there's a couple things. I, I mean, we hear this all the time. Um, we hear that I don't have time to think. Thinking is a, a luxury that I don't have the time for. I, I'm putting out fires. I, uh, you know, I've just got way too many things on my to-do list. And, <clears throat> you know, I would just say, Think about the possibility that you don't have time not to think, right? Like like those things, all those things that I just mentioned, putting out fires, having too many tasks to get done. Those those are all problems. That's that's reality giving us feedback that our thinking isn't working. Hmm. So that's reality giving us feedback that that our that something about our thinking isn't working because we're not aligning with the world right. in a way that's working that's effective. If 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 your day is all about putting out fires, if you have no time to think, then something about what you're doing and the way you're thinking is off. Yeah. Um, so I would say you know thinking is not. I, th I think. Um, it's even in our language. I mean, we can't yeah. say what we think without saying, I think, right? So right. we're thinking all the time, yeah. right? And, and our thoughts on thinking are, I think, have been massively influenced by actually Rodin's The Thinker, oh, the statue of the, the guy yeah, yeah, like yeah. this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and that is that we think of thinking as this kind of like, passive like contemplative hmm, 
uh, or a guy like just right. or, 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 you know contemplative <laughs> right yeah philosophical that's not what thinking is thinking is like how am i gonna feed the dogs without them making a mess right right how am i gonna raise children to make it to adulthood and and avoid being completely addicted by you know to to f iphones and things like yeah. that avoid the immensely dangerous world of drugs right. that we now live in yeah avoid all the different things that that can that can lead to devastating consequences like car accidents and drug or drunk driving and all those kinds of things like how are how am i going to get my kid to make it to adulthood Right. In, a, in one piece. That's thinking. Yeah. You know, how am I going to get my organization to reach its goal? How am I going to get my team to reach its goals? How am I going to get somebody that I, you know, I know they have what we need and they, they have talent, but I don't exactly know how to get it out of them. How am I going to get that to happen? That's all thinking. Right. That's very active. That's not like contemplative uh, I'm sitting in a coffee shop talking philosophy. That's active, dynamic, day to day, really important, mm -hmm. day to day, useful. So you're saying if things aren't working well for if you, things aren't then working you should well. probably revisit how you're thinking yeah, about it in absolutely. the first place. Absolutely. Right. There's some mental model or thinking model that is driving your behavior, that's driving your day, that's driving your action, that's driving the systems in your life. And that mental model is wreaking havoc. Personally and professionally in all kinds of places. Yeah. So you don't have time not to think. No. Th that really is critically important. Right. And But it, how how hard is it to really actually improve your thinking? It's actually if very you, easy. You know, it seems hard. If you're willing to practice, Yeah. then it's easy. And, and I think that probably is the most surprising thing that I have learned in the last 30 years. I know yeah. it sounds yeah. absolutely... Uh, bonkers it's bonkers to think that this is what i learned in 30 years of research <laughs> but this is really that. what i've learned in 30 years or i've learned a lot of things but the thing that we've learned the most that has been the most surprising is i thought like i think most people think that whatever it is that that you need to learn you can you can just teach them right hey. you can do a course so you can take a class yes the truth is yeah, I can teach you thinking in five minutes, but if you don't practice, you won't get better. Right. I can teach you, you know, I, you, you you could probably teach me, you know, yoga or d different things right. that you know in a few minutes. Right, but if you don't practice. But if I don't go practice it, if I don't go do the stretch, if I don't go lift the weight, if I don't go build the website, right? If I don't go right. whatever the thing is, weave the basket then yeah i kind of like quote unquote no because you taught me but i don't really you don't know really anything. know because you can't do yeah, it yeah there's no right. real knowledge there you can't apply it's just it like I, I got some information hmm. but i don't know how to think right. i don't know how to you know do those things to do to, to do a, yeah, yeah. a stretch or whatever so i think the thing that we've learned is yes we can teach you thinking and yes, you can learn thinking, but the way you'll learn it is by practicing the things we teach you. Right. 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 And and that practice is the key. And that and that thinking is no different than any other skill. It's no different than any other skill. Hmm. You name the skill, it's no different. You can get better at that skill. You can get better at thinking. And like most of the skills you try, at first, you're like a little overwhelmed. Right. It seems, seems completely hard. impossible. Mm -hmm. How am I ever going to get good at you know playing the guitar? But you learn one chord, you learn another, you practice mm -hmm. the chord, you get better. You practice the jujitsu move, you, you get better. better. You right. practice the you know whatever it is. You practice a little bit, and you and then all of a sudden you go, oh okay, now I now I'm starting to see it. And pretty soon you're into it, and pretty soon you're you're get, getting that feedback. Right. Of oh wow I am I went to a meeting the other day, and it was like I was a different person. I saw more. I saw uh -huh. what other people at the table weren't seeing. 
I saw, I said things that other people weren't saying. People responded differently to the things I was saying. Right. You know, I, I was in a conversation and it could have gotten heated and it didn't. You know, I, I did something different as a result of seeing a different perspective. Right. And acting upon that difference in, in what I was thinking. Yeah, so that's the benefit so that is what feedback. you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's the benefit of actually investing a little time into it. You're Absolutely. saying is you're literally like the smartest person in the room. You're seeing things that other people aren't seeing. Yeah, because most people aren't practicing thinking. Yeah. Right? So it's not – if imagine if no one was practicing basketball. How good could you be in like a oh week? Oh my god, I would be amazing. You'd be like – you'd be a superstar. <laughs> if nobody else If practicing. nobody in the world was practicing <laughs> basketball – yeah. And you started and you were like, I got an idea. Maybe it's not that you're just born as good as you're ever going to be. Maybe if I shoot more often, I'll get better. Yes. And maybe if I dribble with both hands, I'll get better at it. <laughs> and people are like, what? That's crazy. Yeah. And then you did it for a week. And then I was amazing. You would just be gaming on people. I would be all over. You would be like the I would be like basketball. the greatest of You'd all time. You'd be the Michael Jordan of basketball. I would be the Michael Jordan, the female Michael yeah, Jordan exactly. of basketball. Michael Jordan of basketball, <laughs> which is Michael Jordan. the Michael Jordan of basketball, I think. Yeah. I'd be the female Michael Jordan of basketball, <laughs> which probably she has a name. She exists somewhere. Um, Michaela Jordan. Jordan. No, there's actually probably oh, yeah. the best <laughs> basketball woman, Some... basketball, I don't know Is she the one that got caught in, um, Brittany. Br in Brittany uh, Grimes. Russia? I don't think she, well, I don't know if she's the Michael Jordan. I don't know. The female no Michael Jordan. I don't know women's basketball. I don't know basketball. I don't know, yeah. I don't know. You That's like, beyond. I only know the few players that Carter mentioned, so. <laughs> so, um, you were talking about improving people's thinking. Yeah. Uh, what, What is, like, the actual process by which people do that? Like, how does it start and how does it end? Like, what's the... The steps to it, maybe. The general thing you can learn, you could learn everything you need to know about thinking in like 20 minutes if you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, then it, and then you could spend a lifetime practicing it. I mean, um, so, but the, the way that I would, I guess, recommend that people learn thinking or practice thinking is, you know, we have a we have a thing called the thinking quotient, and uh, that's a, a validated test of yep. of thinking skills. And so I would take that test, and that establishes a diagnostic baseline. So it's just again feedback. It's like go. So you mean their initial score? Yeah, their initial score. Their, Sorry, yeah. uh, their initial <laughs> score. They're, they get a score. Their score in the moment. They get a score. It's like you stand on the scale and you find out how much you weigh, right? Yes. Right. And that tells you kind of like your weaknesses and your strengths in thinking. Right. Your TQ. Uh, your TQ. Which is kind of like IQ, quotient. but it's like better. IQ, yeah. but around thinking. Okay. And um, and then you use that that TQ score and the and the sub scores to to create like a. a you get a, a personalized report and then an action plan mm. can be built out of that. And that action plan usually involves uh, practicing these five moves in different degrees based on your scores. Uh, and so you get started with these five moves. That's really... Uh, so wait, what you're saying is I, I take this TQ test, I get a score, yeah. but not only that, it kind of tells me my areas of strength and weakness... And then tells me which of the moves which will of the fix moves to focus my on. weakness. Yep. yep. And then I just go and practice those in all kinds of stuff. Yep. And and the moves are are very easy. I mean, once yeah, you yeah. learn them, which you can learn them and you know you could learn yeah. a move in five like the zoom under in, five zoom out minutes. Thing. Yeah. You know. Um, once you learn it, then then you know, and you understand the move. You can do it in the car on the way to work. You can do it in the shower. You can do it on a piece of paper. You can, you know, do it on some project at work that's really important. You can do it on something that's totally not important. Right. You could do it on something that's funny and silly. You can do it on something that's very serious. You know, you could do it to solve world hunger or you could do it to feed the, you know, your four dogs better in a more effective way. Right. Um, so... You can use the move uh, in so many different places and so many different areas. It's a, it's a little it's very portable. 
Yeah, it's like I take it with me and whatever I'm dealing with in the day, I can say, hey, how would I zoom in and zoom out to this problem I'm having with my boss? Or how would I zoom in and zoom out to this, um, you know, getting my teenager to take out the trash? I think of it like like stretching. Like once you learn a good stretch, you can, yeah, you could do stretching in the gym or on the field. Yeah. But you can also do it in your kitchen. Yep. In between cooking, you yeah. can do it like, you know, in your bedroom, you can do it in you can do it on the couch. You can, you can do stretching. Once you learn a stretch, you can do it anywhere. Um and and it can have benefit. So, it's very portable. Uh and then that gives you practice and you get better at it. And pretty soon, um you'll you'll just do it. You'll just you'll just do it naturally. Um and then I'll Very, just be a better thinker. Yeah, and you're just you'll you'll I within a week of doing the moves. That's pretty good. Within a week, week or two, you will you will notice differences in the way you think about the world, in the way that you navigate relationships, in the way that you navigate communication and listening. And look at problems. In the way that yeah. you approach problems, in the way that you um it's amazing. notice. Yeah. Like as you walk through the world you will notice more. way more stuff. Yeah. That's what people tell us all the time. Like, yeah. How did I, how do I, how did I, I can't remember what it was like to exist when I didn't see all these things that I was seeing. Yeah. It's so you'll see it pretty quickly. Yeah. It's a thing. It's a thing. Up thinking. That's it's what we thing. say. It's a thing. That's our kind of our, our vision is to, yeah. is to make up thinking a thing because the world needs it. Oh yeah. The world needs the world needs thinking and all up thinking is is just being a little bit more aware. Aware of what that means, what thinking means and how important it is and how part of every single second of every single day it is and something that important and that every day can't just be overlooked. No. And can't just be ignored. Yeah. So that's kind of that's what up thinking is. That is a wrap. That is a wrap. <laughs>